Hello everyone, this is Caleb Simpson, and you are watching my walkthrough for Chrono Trigger for Nintendo DS. In the last video, we just got back from 65 million BC and acquired Dreamstone, so now in this video, we're going to be covering the chapter titled The Masamun, in which we take the Dreamstone as well as the broken pieces of the Masamun, take it back to Melchior so we can reforge it, bring it back to Frog, and then finally entering the Magic Cave to work our way towards Magus's castle. So that's what's going to be happening in this particular video. Now, as long as we're here in the end of time, I am going to send off my monster to train here in the Arena of Ages. Again, this is only available in the DS remake, so just as a reminder, if you are doing the Arena of Ages, then I would recommend you send off your monster to train whenever you are back at the end of time. As I've said before, if you're ever stuck and not sure where to go, you can always go speak with the old man here in the middle of End of Time, and he will then give you a tip on where to go next. Now, I do find this a little bit strange, because sometimes he gives you very specific advice, and he tells you exactly what to do, and other times he gives you, like, either really vague advice, or he just says nothing at all. He's like, hey, nice to see you again. Like, woo, not helpful at all. So I feel like he's very inconsistent with his, uh, with his dialogue. But anyway, that is a potential option. So at this point, if you speak with him, he'll encourage you to go back towards Medina Village in 1000 AD. So take the portal there and head over to Melchior's house in the bottom left. Now at this point, if you speak with him, we'll then toss him the various ingredients of the Dreamstone, the Broken Sword, and the Broken Hilt, and then th this will then be forged back into the Masa Moon. Now, one of our characters will actually join him to help him with the forging process, and that can be either Luca or Robo, depending on who you have in your current party. Now in general, for this game, I'll try and recommend the character combinations that I think have the most enjoyable dialogue for various cinematic -y th moments like this. Um, but in this particular case, between Robo and Luca, I think they're both very similar. They basically say the exact same thing, so it doesn't really matter. So choose whoever you want. And then as far as your last character, the character in your second slash third slot, they will then move over and you only have access to two characters. At this point, you can actually use the um, Y button or whatever to swap your characters around. And if you have, if you can do that, but you still only have access to two characters, so I can't put Robo in my third slot, for example, right now, it won't let me do that. Also, whoever you have in your now second slot will not allow you to leave. So if you try to leave the house, then they'll yell at you. So you have to go back downstairs and then just wait for them to finish crafting the Moss Moon. Um, something you can do here too that's kind of interesting is that different positions where they are in the room, then you can speak with them, and they have different dialogue where they're either conversing with each other or just basically telling you to stop interrupting. Uh, but I do think that their dialogue is a little interesting, in particular the ones that let them talk to each other. So they're explaining what they're doing and talking to each other about what they're attempting to do, as opposed to just watching them do their little animations. So I think it's kind of cool. Just adds a little bit more depth to what's happening. And so you can totally talk with them if you like. Once all of the dialogue is finally complete, it's time to return to Frog and bring him the completed Masa Moon. So work your way back to the residence that is here in Medina Village, go back through the cabinet, then go into the portal that leads back to 600 AD in Truce Canyon, and then work your way all the way back to the Cursed Woods and finally to Frog's house. <laughs>
once all those movies are done, we finally then reacquire Frog, and he's in our party for the rest of the entire game, which is great. So Frog's a really wonderful character, and we can now use him however we like. Now, as far as priorities here, now at this point, you can actually go straight towards Magus's castle. I would highly recommend you don't do that, because a couple things we want to do. So we want to equip Frog with some better items, some accessories, as well as better armor and stuff. He's still wearing bronze gear, which was what we were wearing when we went to Minoria Cathedral, so we need to update that. So I have some gear that I got in 65 million BC that I can throw on him here in a little bit. Uh, the other high, highest priority, I think, in general, actually, is to acquire magic. So he still does not have his magic unlocked, so we want to bring him to Specchio at the end of time. So I'd highly recommend you do that first. That is our first priority, is to do that. So go back to Truce Canyon, work your way back to the end of time, and bring Frog to Specchio. So one of the things I've been meaning to do for this walkthrough is I really wanted to sit down and, like, talk about the various characters and explain, kind of, like, uh, my opinion of their best use in combat, or, like, what when is the best time to use them? What do they excel at? What are they good for? When should you use them? And I haven't really had time to do that so far because the walkthrough so far has been so fast-paced. Things are happening so quickly that I haven't had time to really sit down and talk about them. So, Frog. What is Frog good for? I feel like the best way to describe him is two things to realize about him. Is that he's all about, um, I, I would call him a jack-of-all-trades is kind of what I would say. He's kind of just this kind of middle of the road. He doesn't really excel at any one thing in particular. So he's a nice person for your third slot in particular because he can do both support by healing people. And he's pretty, pretty decent at healing the whole party. Um, and then otherwise he can also do just consistent damage. He doesn't do a lot of damage, he just kind of like keeps the damage rolling, I guess would be the best way to explain it. And the other thing about him is that he's focused on mana efficiency. So he doesn't actually use a lot of mana for most of his techs and dual techs that he has with the players, which is really interesting because it allows him to have an, a big MP pool that doesn't run out very quickly. And uh, that's something that a lot of other characters actually lack, where they can they can blow through a lot of MP very, very quickly. And Frog doesn't typically have that problem in most situations. So a quick note about what's happening on screen. I just met up with Specchio and with Frog in my party. So Frog just learned magic. So now he can finally use the water spell. This is still water element, just like uh, Marl's ice ability. So he has star water, which is okay. Um, now his magic stat is lower than Marl, so he doesn't do anywhere near as much magic damage. Now, at this point, you can fight against Specchio, but Frog is not very suited to it right now especially because I haven't um, leveled him up at all. He doesn't have any healing right now, so it is a little bit rough. So you can fight Specchio. Unfortunately, because we're in the lower 20s right now, and this particular form of Specchio is from levels 20 to 29, then this particular fight will be very difficult. In fact, we don't have enough magic resistance to really survive a lot of his attacks. He can one-shot our characters right now, which is kind of rough. So in the lower 20s, it's probably really hard. So I'm actually going to do this after this next section. I'm going to do like Magus's Castle, and then I'll probably come back and fight Specchio. As long as we're here at the end of time, I'm going to go ahead and throw my monster into a battle real quick and then send him out for training again. That is how you can keep your trust stat high, by the way. So just do, if you just alternate back and forth, you can guarantee that you don't lose trust and then that way you're still ga steadily gaining stats. I'm actually pretty maxed out on most of my stuff anyway, but whatever. Um, so anyways, going back to talking about Frog. So he has two different types of swords that he can use. One type has a very high crit chance and the other one has, uh, basically does increased damage versus magical creatures. And magical creatures are typically like, they have, they use a lot of magic, but they're also more vulnerable to magic and they're typically more resistant to physical damage. However, um, in Frog's particular case, he actually does additional damage against those types of enemies. So it's a lot of enemies that are in 600 AD as well as 12,000 BC. So those are kind of the two time periods where Frog in particular really shines. So just bear that in mind as far as when you're deciding if you want to use Frog or not. As far as dual techs go, most of the dual techs that he has available are typically focused on physical single target damage. So if you have like a boss, for example, that's vulnerable to physical, Frog can be a really good person to have in your party. Along those same lines though, you know, some characters are just a little bit more focused on stuff than others. Like, as you've noticed, like, Luca is definitely a magic damage dealer. That's what she does. Her physical damage is pretty much non-existent. And then meanwhile, Chrono is a little bit more focused towards physical, for example. But uh, Frog does not really have a specialization. And so he's just kind of this weird, he's in this weird limbo state where he's kind of in between everything. Now, what that means, though, is that his damage is never really going to be as high as other characters that are specialized in that area. However, the benefit of that is that he's pretty, he has pretty decent, um, like, physical offense, pretty decent magical offense, kind of. It's okay. He's just kind of okay in all these categories. I would say, honestly, his highest damage is definitely going to be just his regular attack, which is kind of boring. You're just hitting the one button. He just, his attacks are not very, um, they typically don't hit very hard for most of the combinations that he could possibly do. Now, the advantage of Frog, though, is that he is so versatile. So he kind of just, um, is okay in everything, and that makes it so that he's a very safe choice, um, in particular, I, my opinion is as a third. So you have two other characters that you're using their dual tech to attack the boss or whatever, and then you're using Frog either as supplemental healing or your primary healer. And then whenever everybody's topped off, then he's doing damage with his regular attack. He's saving mana, he's doing decent damage, and he's very, he's very consistent. 
So he's a very, you know, like sustained character is kind of the way I would describe him. So he's a jack of all trades sustained character that's all about like prolonging the fight and keeping everybody alive and just being good, like dishing out consistent damage constantly. And that's what he does. Now, even though I was saying that Frog's magic stat isn't absolutely terrible or anything, his magic damage for a lot of his skills doesn't typically scale very well. The multipliers on him are very low, so he's not really best suited for water damage. If you have a boss or something that, um, there's a lot of bosses where water damage will like lower the enemy's defenses, for example. So Frog is a great choice for bringing for those particular fights. However, um, just don't really rely on him for magic damage in general. You're way better off using like Luca in particular for that. Um, but instead, something to realize with Frog he's just all physical damage both with his auto attack and his techs and then he's healing that's what he does and he's typically focused on group healing multi-target heals is what he tends to focus on is a little bit more his playstyle. and then he can crank out some really hard hitting uh single target heals as well if he needs to so that's what frog is good for he's a great boss healer um and so that's uh, something to realize for him is if you're you're about to fight a boss and you're not sure who to bring frog is a real solid choice for that so next we want to head over to Lucas' house and we can get Tabin's Helm from Tabin here. And what this does is it has even more physical defense than the Stone Helms. It's a nice little upgrade, but it also gives you some magic defense. And just so you know, magic defense and physical defense are completely separate stats and they're completely irrelevant from each other. And this particular headpiece actually provides quite a bit of magic defense. So even later on in the game, this is still a viable choice to put in that head slot. So don't sell it or anything. You want to hang on to this headpiece for a long time because... Um, even after we've, you know, quote-unquote, out-leveled it, you can still swap out for this particular headpiece occasionally for certain fights, and it would help quite a bit, and it would reduce damage that Luca takes by a lot, actually. So real quick, as long as we're in 1000 AD, I'm just going to bring Frog to introduce him to Chrono's mother, just because it's fun. I love all the dialogue in this game, it's so great. But yeah, uh, magic defense is amazing. Like, there's, it's not uncommon to have boss battles where, uh, like, 90% of the boss's attacks are all magical in nature, so even though you're more more susceptible to just that one particular attack because you're... Your regular physical armor is like six less. Ooh. Meanwhile, your magical defense is 10 more than you would normally have. And that just gives you so much more defense. Like, I'm not even sure what the math is on that exactly. But like, whatever your magic defense is for your current level, your base value for that is, if you can increase it by 10 or even 20, you reduce the damage you take from magical attacks by so much. Like seriously, 75% of the damage or 80% of the damage, something crazy like that, because it's more than you should have at that level. And so it makes a really big difference. So just to recap what happened in the last little while, we got Frog at long last, so we come back to the end of time, have him learn magic from Specchio, also equip better uh, equipment on him because he was wearing a bunch of bronze gear, which was all like Minoria Cathedral tier. So I gave him like a bunch of stone gear and I gave him a better accessory. And then finally we went to 1000 AD to get the Tabin sound from Tabin in Luca's house in 1000 AD. So make sure you do all those things. As far as the last thing to do is you want to go back to 600 AD and then I'd recommend you actually really quick just swap out your character members. And the reason for this is so that we can learn some dual text with Frog real quick because now that he has magic, he has new abilities that have been unlocked. So just do a quick fight with um, each character real quick so that you can unlock all the potential dual text that Frog now has access to. I suppose this is particularly true with Robo because we didn't even have that character before, so there's going to be a bunch of different dual texts that are going to be unlocked at this point. But I just recommend you do it here with a bunch of easy enemies because you can kill them real quick and learn those dual texts. Um, and then that way we're more prepared for upcoming fights because you don't want to get into this situation where you're like getting ready for a boss fight or whatever and then you don't have any text unlocked at all. It just make, puts you in this awkward position. So I'd recommend you just swap your characters back and forth real quick and do this. So with all that optional stuff out of the way, we're finally ready to continue on with the main quest. Now our objective is to go fight Magus, the fiend lord, and he's the leader of all the fiends and he's the one who's sort of behind the war, supposedly. So we're going to go figure out what's going on with that. And the location of Magus's castle is through, Mag through the magic cave. And you learned that from some of the villagers in Dorino Village, I think, which is just south of Xenon Bridge. So once you finally completed the bridge, I talked with all of the villagers there and that's where we learned about that. So uh, the magic cave is located just east of Dorino and just immediately east is the Den of our mountains but a little bit further east than that is another little mountain it doesn't actually have like a little path icon in front of it or anything but you can totally stand in front of it and it says that it is labeled as magic cave and this is our destination a little bit vague they don't actually like super express this thoroughly but this is where we're meant to go now you could have gone here before but there wasn't anything we could have done at that time but now that we have frog in our party and we also have the masa moon he can finally um, gain us access to the magic cave at long last <laughs>
So as I've mentioned in previous videos, at various points throughout the game, uh, for certain versions of the game anyways, there are cinematics that play, and so one of those takes place as we unlock this cave. And so if you are interested in watching that movie, I'm not including them in the walkthrough because it causes my videos to get flagged for copyright. The audio is copyright claimed on them, so it would uh, remove any ad revenue from this particular video. And I put a lot of work into these, you know what I mean? So uh, I don't actually have the videos included in this particular walkthrough. If you're interested in watching the cinematic that just took place a little bit ago, you can do a search for uh, like Frog, Moss and Moon, Cave Cinematic, and you'll see that right away. Um, but yeah, so I don't actually have them uploaded and that's why, but um, feel free to watch them if you are interested. They are kind of, like a lot of the cinematics are just kind of repeats of events that you already saw. So it's kind of like just an animated version of the scene you already witnessed just a little bit ago. Instead of like in-game assets, you're just watching an animated thing instead. So I, they, they feel kind of redundant to me. Whatever you want to do, if you're interested in watching that, that's how you can do that. By the way, another quick fun fact is the Masa Moon was actually a key item. We couldn't, it, when you first get Frog just a little bit ago, then he is not wearing, he's still wearing like the the bronze sword or whatever it was we got back in uh, Minori Cathedral. So that was the item that he was wearing. Meanwhile, uh, the Master Moon was a key item and he wasn't act he didn't actually even have it equipped. Um, that it only changes from a key item to a regular piece of equipment at this point when we enter the cave that or when we unlock the cave during that cinematic, that is when the uh, Master Moon then becomes a regular equipment item and Frog equips it. But just so you know, most of the characters in the game, I think it's like a 10% chance to crit in general, so one-tenth of the time they will crit. Now, Frog actually has uh, a little bit more than that. He has a 23% chance to crit, so he crits more often than other characters. So even if his melee damage is similar, he actually does more damage overall compared to other characters because he critical strikes more often. However, something you can do to boost that even more is, while wearing the Masa Moon anyways, if he has the Hero's Badge equipped, it will increase the critical strike chance by an additional 17%, which brings it up to 50% chance to crit. Which means that his regular attack is just a little bit more extreme and it makes it even more awesome. So that's something you can do for Frog to increase his damage. However, just know that that does not increase the damage of his dual techs. So if you want to increase the damage of like, uh, you know, X-Strike for example, if you want to increase the damage of that, then you'd be better off putting on a strength increasing accessory such as like the Power Glove or the Power Scarf on Frog instead. And that would increase the damage of his text. So, uh, power slash strength stats will increase the damage of his text. Meanwhile, the Hero's Badge will increase the damage of his regular attack um, if you have the Muscle Moon equipped. So that's kind of the pros and cons of the different accessories that you can choose right now. Um, either one of them is good. I think overall, probably the Hero's Badge is smarter in general. Uh, but whatever you want to do there. Up ahead, there is a dead guard on the ground who apparently died. I'm assuming trying to escape the castle or something. He's working his way back this way, and then he died, but whatever. He has apparently scrawled a note in blood to warn about future passerbys, which is uh, kind of disturbing. But anyways, he warns about an upcoming enemy called a juggler and explains that if you hit him with physical attacks, they'll in get increased physical defense. Hit him with magical attacks, they'll increase their magic defenses. And that's all well and good. It doesn't really matter too much. I wouldn't worry about that so much because they're extremely susceptible to, med to fire damage. So if, as long as you have Luca in your party, you can easily counter them and it's not a big deal at all. Um, so anyway, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Exit the cave. This will then lead us to a new continent where we find the Fiend Lord's Keep, a.k.a. Magus's Castle. And I will be covering that in the next video. So if you enjoyed this one and found it helpful, be sure to throw a like on it, subscribe, and check out my other playlists for more content just like this. Thanks so much for watching. You guys have an amazing day, and I'll see you next time.